well. So glad we're finally doing this. I feel like it's been a long time coming. I know. Oh, I know. Well, thank you for suggesting it. It's exciting. I've never done it before. Me either. So I'm a little nervous. My heart is beating a little fast, but you oh. are a friend. You're a buddy, so I'm feeling a little more relaxed. So thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And it would be such that um, the building maintenance is actually oh. vacuuming my floor right at this oh. moment. So <laughs> I apologize if you can hear it in the background. But I can hear it a little bit, but hopefully you can't hear it too loud. I can hear it at all. Okay. Um, can any of our audience hear it? I can't hear it. So we're good. <laughs> but yeah. Our audience. Oh, oh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> So let's get started. I'm Valon Lay. As Jenny mentioned, the hidden member, the hidden co-founder of Quality Builders in the background. So this is my first time coming out. So I'll do a quick, quick introduction. My name is Valon Lay. As I mentioned, uh, we're here to talk about women in real estate. So of course, I feel like I should give my real estate <laughs> background. So I started out as a more so of a side real estate investor you know had a regular job and also uh did some um real estate investment i actually started out with a house hack in dc uh purchased the four unit rented the three unit lived in one for free so the whole house hacking thing so super amazing got hooked on real estate investment i've done several things actually in real estate uh real estate agents where i was actually selling so <laughs> We'll talk about that a little bit later with you also, Jenny, because I know you have a real estate license. I've actually been the dreaded, I've done property management, the the much dreaded uh, aspect of uh, real estate investment, did property management on my properties, and actually worked for a bigger company as a property manager for some months. And I'm like, okay, not my thing at all. And now uh, general contracting. So I've gone through like different areas of real estate. So I'm super excited to talk about Jenny, hear about her experience, talk about mine a little bit. So... Let's get started. That's, so Jen that's a great that's such a great background. Oh. You have you're so fascinating to me. I think the most fascinating thing, which probably very few people know, is that you you actually sorry I didn't mean to monopolize this, oh. but you know that you live out of state yeah. and yet you you operate a business very well that takes place in Chicago, and I just think that that's incredible. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we have um, we have Jonathan on the ground. And we also have Dev on the ground, but it's it presents some challenges. But we work so well together. I almost feel like I'm I'm there. Uh, we meet quite frequently. So, um, but yeah, it can be a little challenging. But well, thank you for acknowledging acknowledging that. Can so, I can I be really obnoxious for a moment and and just go get my Bluetooth headset because the noise that I, I, as I was saying they're vacuuming in the hall and it's just it's killing me so if you could give me one no second problem at all. no problem I'll say hi to our audience hi everyone oh Mr. Wonderful friend hi welcome thank you for joining us hi Jonathan coach Clem hello Tom thank you for joining us Elias is here, my husband. Hi, thank you. Okay. In. All right. Great. So let's get started. Are you? Okay. Sorry, this uh, tech difficulties. Oh, my sister was here. She's amazing. Sending all the loves. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Sorry. Take your time, Jenny. Take your time. It's fine. I'm just saying hi to our audience. Realtor Blaine. Oh, I love your content. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Greg. Greg is here. Okay. I've gotten the Bluetooth in my ear. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Hi. Oh. oh. You know, Roger, it doesn't want to work. If for some reason, it doesn't want to work. It, it comes on, and then it just goes off. Okay. We really can't hear it, here, but I can see. I can, yeah. you can hear it, and you're, it's probably driving you crazy, but well, I can't. Well, I'm a little hard of hearing. Um, fun fact, I 
worked in a restaurant and a bar for 14 years and it, there was very loud music <laughs> and I never wore earplugs. I never even thought of it. And I think that it definitely had an effect on my hearing. So um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you hear sort of ambient noise in the back, it distracts you unless, unless the person in front of you is loud and moving their lips where you can actually, I you can know, be loud. <laughs> No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm just, it's distracting to me, but I'm going to make this happen. I'm so, I'm sorry. Let's, oh, let's do this. Oh, thank you for joining us. Still, this is like that going on. Thank you for not canceling on us. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So let's get started for everyone that came in a little later. Uh, I did a quick inter introduction already, but I'll go again. My name is Balan Lay. I'm one of the co-founders here at Quality Builders. And today we're talking to Jenny. Do you go by Jenny B at all? I've always been curious because you're like Jenny B, Jenny B. Is it Jenny B or just Jenny? <laughs> Jenny, are you saying is it Jenny B or you, Jenny? I know it's Jenny, but do you ever go by Jenny B at all? Um, I have some friends that call me Jenny B or call me B, um, but mostly I go by Jenny or Jen, but honestly, I love Jenny B too. I just, when I was younger, I, I started that username on Skype. It was Jenny B01 and it was B-E-E because -E the B was taken. So I had to do B-E-E. -E, and so it kind of just stuck with me over the years. Oh, okay. But you're fine with Jenny or Jen? Jen. Absolutely. Just, just not Jennifer because that's not my name. <laughs> That's great. Well, Greg just admitted to run in the vacuum to distract you. So you're going to have to talk to Greg after this. Oh, yeah. it's, it's the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's the building maintenance vacuuming in the hallways. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's get started. Jenny, can you give us a background? You have a very interesting background. If I recollect, you said that you worked in TV production. Right. I did. Okay. I did. I, I, amongst many other things, I have a very sorted, crazy, wild back, not sorted, you know, just <laughs> kind of like out of whack, out of sorts, um, doesn't really make much sense. But yes, most recently before getting into real estate, I was in TV production for eight years. Um, I worked uh, for a local TV production company that was based in Knoxville, Tennessee, where I lived for 10 years and um, mainly worked on um, TV shows for networks like Food Network and Cooking Channel, Travel Channel, HGTV, um, Investigation Discovery, those, those types of kind of lifestyle docu-series shows. And um, yeah, I did a lot of, a lot of um, field work and then I transitioned into casting. So for several years I worked um, as a casting producer and I got to meet people in our industry, you know, trying to find people who are in the real estate industry for real estate shows. Um, yeah, that was super fun. Um, yeah. That's amazing. So how did you get into real estate then? Because that, I know you mentioned AGTV and casting and finding people. Is that really what drew you into real estate or was it something else? You know, I think um, the, the big draw to real estate was, so my mom, my mom passed away um, beginning of March 2018, and she was a real estate investor, but she never, she never made a stink about it. It wasn't like a thing. It's just who she was. Like, I grew up in a three flat in northern New Jersey, and I didn't know it was a three flat. I just knew we lived on the first floor, and she rented out the top two floors, and she made money to help cover the bills. And but but she never talked about it that way, you know. She never talked about it as, oh, I'm an investor and we're house hacking and I'm using these bills to cover this and and so. Um, but after she passed away, I I had like a shift in my perspective on pretty much everything because because when you lose someone really close to you, if you've ever lost, you know, either a, a mom or a dad or someone that's really really close to you, it really turns your world upside down. Um, you just see things very differently. And so some things that I had never noticed before, like the whole real estate aspect of my mom's life, I, I noticed. I became very aware that, oh, my gosh, you know, that's what she did. Um, and then when I met Greg, who's my partner in Property People, he was a general contractor. He's a general contractor for many years. And we got to talking just about how, you know, he was at a point in his career where he was sort of, 
tired of working with homeowners, you know, wanted to do his own thing, maybe buy his own properties, renovate them and sell them instead of working with a, with a homeowner on a custom project. Um, and I said, well, that sounds really interesting. I, I would renovate a place and sell it, you know, and flip it. And, um, and so we started talking more about it. And then we found a couple of programs that, you know, like learning programs, essentially, some free workshops and seminars, and we read some books and listened to some podcasts just to sort of educate ourselves a little bit more on the topic. And as I was listening to those things, that's when I became really hyper aware of who my mom was and what she did all those years. Um, and then my love, you know, just sort of budded from that. Wow. So did that make you feel more so of a connection to your mom? Absolutely. Yeah. My, my mom was an amazing person. She was not into marketing. So, so she just lived her life and was kind to everybody and she could talk to anybody and she was such a great soul, but she wasn't into marketing. So she was never promoting um, things that I think, you know, I'm not mad. And I'm not resentful, and she was incredible, but, like, it would have been nice right. had I grown up with her sort of talking with me back and forth about, you know, investing. And re she did talk about the stock market. <laughs> talked a lot about the stock market, but she didn't, she didn't really go into the, either that or I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> which is another thing that happens after you lose someone who's really close to you is you start to pay attention to things that you didn't pay attention to before. You become aware of things that you weren't aware of before, um, and you, you you become more introspective. At least I did. Um, so yeah, it definitely, I think, deepened the connection between my mom and me, unfortunately, after she passed away. That's amazing. This is why I love talking to you, Jen. I just get so many nuggets. Uh, I, just, I really just enjoy I love talking to you. So I love talking to you, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so you got your start with that. She was talking to Greg, your partner, and started to find courses and learning. So at what point did you guys say, okay, we're ready to just dive in? Oh, my gosh. I mean, we were ready before we were ready. Hmm. Uh, okay. Um, we, I mean, I think Greg was always ready because he had that experience under his belt and he had a lot of confidence with, with renovating. Um, and so we started when we, when we met and we fell in love and we moved in together in Chicago, we decided, um, that we were going to look for a condo to, to fix up and to sell. Mm -hmm. And so we hooked up with a local realtor and um, she was looking for us and sending us, you know, MLS listings and stuff like that. And at one point in time, we were having a conversation with her, our realtor at the time, and she had told us about a hoarder house that she found for another investor client. And she was telling us all about this hoarder house. And I was thinking, gee, that sounds cool. And, you know, Greg and I were like, we want a hoarder house, you know, <laughs> we can get a really good deal on a hoarder house, right? Like, yes. and, and who knows what you may find in there. So we told her, if you come upon another hoarder house, give us a call. And lo and behold, within a couple of weeks, we a, hoarder house, a hoarder house came on the market. Now, mind you, this is right before the COVID shutdowns. So this is January of 2020. Obviously, nobody knew what was coming at the time. Um, but she found us a hoarder house on the market. It was a bankruptcy and a foreclosure. And um, we went to see it. We, we, we tried to walk through the house. It was filled from floor to ceiling, all three levels. And there was a pathway about this wow. skinny, about, I'm exaggerating, but you know, about as thin as a person. And you had to turn sideways to walk through it. And so this was our visit to the house to determine if we wanted to put an offer in on it. And you know, I'm just like walking through the house. And I think Greg is walking through the house thinking, you know, the walls, the floors, everything is kind of padded and protected all these years. So how bad of a condition could the house actually be in? Because it's protected by all this stuff. And so we talked about it and he said, yeah, let's put an offer in. We can, we can renovate this. You know, we ran the numbers, ran the comps, verified it with our realtor. And so we put an offer in and, and we got the house wow. and we, you know, we just decided to do a gut renovation. Um, and we added a little bit of a larger dormer on top, not a full dormer and not a full second story at the time, but it just, it really, it, it kind of just like, you know, boom, boom, boom. Like it just happened. Wow. One thing led to the next. Um, 
and and then and then we found another house right around the same time, three miles away. Not a hoarder house, but a gut rehab. Also a foreclosure. I think it was a foreclosure, uh, or it was bank owned. It was an REO, and um, and so we took that one on at the same time, and we did those two projects together. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah. Wow. So you just dive right in hoarder house and also a second home while renovating your first. We did. We did. We we dove right in, and I and honestly, looking back, I would say that I was insane because, <laughs> because I. But I was also, I didn't know any better. And, and I think that in some ways that's a blessing. You know, they say ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, Greg's got this. He knows what he's doing. We could do this. Like, we'll, we'll do this. I, I didn't even know step one. I knew nothing about real estate, renovating, flipping, any of that at this time, other than the podcasts and some books and, you know, some of the training seminars that we had done. Um, but yeah, and that became our thing, finding two properties at once and working on two at a time ever since then. You, you're amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you, you're just amazing. But I actually agree with you with the whole thing. Like for my, my sister's on here. Hi, sis. Uh, we, we started together with the house hacking, looking for homes in DC. And I remember someone just saying like, what in the world you guys are beginners and you're looking for multi family units and we were just like we were just naive we didn't know anything we're just like well how bad can it be you know so i think that it does help to have that to be a little naive and just being like very optimistic just like, everything's gonna work out whatever everything we can figure out anything so um it, i i really really connected when you said that you're just like eh, i was the same i did it it worked out the way it's supposed to so that's really good to hear and so people get so deep into the analysis uh, you know about analysis paralysis like we know so many people that we've spoken to for years and it still wouldn't jump my sister and i have like this running joke like yeah he's not gonna jump this is just this annual check-in of i want to get into real estate and then like, so i think it's really great to just have that like beginner like let's just i'm gonna do it and then you just jump right in so insane but just wonderful and <laughs> just amazing so what did you learn through that process especially with two at a time what was the question? Sorry. Learn through that process. So how was your first, how was it the first set of projects for you? You know, we learned a lot, but I will say um, we also got really lucky because this was a great time in real estate and in flipping. Um, you know, we were we closed on those first two houses in March of 2020. Wow. Yeah, right like at the, the week before the lockdowns and you know while a lot of people were freaking out in chicago nothing stopped stopped nothing skipped a beat it was real estate went on i mean they they kind of did you know virtual walkthroughs sometimes for for home showings for buyers but it just construction continued renovating continued all the contractors were working unless they were sick um real estate was happening and so we got really lucky i i I want to say, you know, oh, we, we had all these great systems and we did really well and we budgeted really well and we, we renovated really well and, and we, we did, but we also really got lucky. It was like the stars aligned and, you know, I think that we probably um, could have spent a little less money uh, if we had a little more experience and maybe we could have made a little less money had it not been an inflated market right, on right. the sales side. So, yeah. you know, I think overall we did well. Um, we learned a lot about contractors, even though Greg, oh, hey. general, <laughs> you know, Greg being a general contractor now, and he's been on both sides of, of the coin, right? He's, he's been the GC being hired by a client and now he's been a, 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 an investor hiring a contractor. So when we first started, we weren't licensed GCs with the city of Chicago. Um, so we just hired a GC, a licensed GC. And at first it seemed like a great relationship. It was a father and son duo. And um, the father was amazing. And the son just turned out to be not so amazing. Um, they got us through the projects, but he just turned out to be not the kind of person we would want to work with again. And so we looked for some other general contractors, hired them on our next projects. And it was kind of the same thing. like. with a custom general contractor where they're working at a, at a higher level, you know? Um, and so, I don't know. 
we, we decided after, I think it was after our fourth or fifth project that we were going to get our GC license with the city and just GC everything ourselves. We, we were trying to outsource it all so that, you know, it was less work, yes, essentially, yes. right? Like less being in the field, less babysitting, less managing. But it just, it really didn't work that well. It, it worked. We did fine. But we, what a hassle, you know? And, and um, just, you just encounter a lot of shady characters. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. I've been doing this for, I don't, I think eight years maybe, and general contractors are a huge pain point for sure, which is, you know, why, we, you know, like our story, which is why, you know, Jonathan and I and Tom were just like, you know, Jonathan is a big, big, big time investor, uh, very inspiring, but, you know, with all of like our projects i've never really in the past i've never had a good project you just i just always walked away just feeling like Ugh, you know so general contracts are definitely a huge huge pain point and it's so glad that greg decided you guys decided to go go your own way and you guys have been killing it ever since like right from the beginning i mean let's talk about roxy <laughs> Roxy, Roxy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's sick of Roxy. Oh, no, I'm not sick of Roxy. So uh, I don't know what Roxy is, but I think it's amazing that you name your uh, projects, your buildings. I, I do that also with my rental properties, my buildings, but mine is not creative at all. It's just the name of the street that the, that the building is on. Like, fortunately, like, it's always been a name, though, like Doris. And then I had Andrews and Duane. So it's always been a name. So I'm just like, oh, Duane, Doris, you know. So how did you come up with yours? So Roxy, for everyone that's here, is a gorgeous, gorgeous building. Has four condos. You guys built it from the ground up. So we got to hear all about that. Um, it's a luxury condos. Is it it's three bedroom? Is it 3.5 bath or 2.5 bath? Three, three beds, two and a half bath. Two and a half bath. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous plug in square. How did you make the jump from fixing and flipping to being, hey, we're going to go buy land and we're going to develop? Yeah. yeah, good question. Um, so, so there were two questions there. It's about naming projects and then also mm -hmm. going from renovations to new construction. Um, I'll start with the shorter one, which is naming the project. Um, in the past, we would just name our projects like the street name, yeah. which, <laughs> which was, was just easy and I didn't have to think about anything. <laughs> um, but then with this project, it, it just seemed fitting that that she have a, a more meaningful name. I don't I can't explain it. Something just came over me and said, you need to name this project. You need to think, you know, what is this project creatively and aesthetically and design wise? You know, what what is what is it and and what name can capture the essence of that and so i was torn between just picking a random name which i thought would be sleek and sexy and cool and fun and actually giving it relevance because it's located on north rockwell street and so the name Roxy really is derived from north rockwell street rock on the rocks roxy so that's where I came up with Roxy, and I thought, well, it actually is a very sexy, sleek, cool <laughs> name. Um, but yeah, but she's the first building we've named, and so that's the yeah, that's the answer to that. Um, as far as going from renovations to new construction, that happened around uh, December. I'd say around February of 2021. Um, we had bought a house in East Albany Park that came with an adjacent vacant lot. And the plan initially, this was, it was an off-market deal that one of our realtors had brought to us. Um, they were going to go on, on the market again, but they, they were trying to sell it off-market because they had been on the market before and it, it wasn't successful. Of course, they were way overpriced. Um, they were willing to reduce their price. So anyway, we went and um, walked through this property, and the intention was to tear down the house and build two single family homes side by side. And the reason we wanted to do that was because we had seen one of our architects do that, uh, Prashant from PMPC Architects. 
yeah, for Sean, we worked with quite a bit, and that was like his thing, you know. He Real View Design and Development does. They do the two single-family homes side by side, and we're like, hey, we could do that. Um, so that was our intention, was to tear the house down, build two single-family homes side by side. When we got to the property and we walked through that house, it was just too beautiful of a house to tear down. And so we decided to just do a gut rehab and build one house on the vacant lot. And so that's what we did. We got rehabbed the one house, and we built a new construction house right next to it at the same time. And after going through the process of rehabbing juxtaposed with the new construction process, it became very clear that new construction was a lot easier. And so after that, I got spoiled, and I said, I never want to do another rehab again. Wow. <laughs> What do you say We have to unpack that. <laughs> new construction is easier, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, new construction is, um, it's, it, it's a blank canvas. Hmm. You know, you, you budget for everything, right? You build the spec sheet, you build, you build a budget for everything under the sun for new construction. And so you go in full well knowing pretty much what you're going to spend, unless hyperinflation occurs. And then we're all kind of screwed. Uh, not side topic, but assuming that doesn't happen, right. you, you're pretty well you're pretty well informed, um, and you can also just make it exactly how you want it. You don't have to work around ductwork and conduit and other mechanicals and existing walls and beams and all that, you know, to like figure out where you're going to put what and how how big is this bedroom is going to going to be and does this bathroom make sense and where the kitchen is. And so it's easier, it's a blank canvas, um, whereas with renovations, I mean, you know, if you, you always have to have a very, very large buffer, a very large contingency. And it's a good idea to have a contingency for new construction as well, of course. But I think you need a larger contingency for all of the unknowns, the unforeseen with renovations, um, unless you go into that renovation just saying kind of the same thing. We're just going to do everything. We're tearing this thing down to the studs. We're going to upgrade the water line. We're going to replace the sewer line. We're going to, you know, new roof, new, everything new. Then I'd say it's a little bit easier. The worst is when you try to, like, like piecemeal it. Mm. You know, like, I'm going to do a renovation on this house, and, 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 and here's my budget, and I'm only going to do these things because that's what's necessary, and that's what's going to sell the house. No, but then when the buyer comes in and they do their inspection and they find something clogging part of the sewer line, you're like, oh, there's $9,000 I didn't budget for. So it's just, it's, it's a lot of less, less unknowns, less of those things with new construction, which makes it a lot easier, I find. Amazing. Well, I hope the audience learned something. I definitely, I never thought of it that way, but you're completely right. You're completely right. But the reason, and I'll be like fully transparent. My sister's here. She, she's a big inspiration, obviously, on my journey because she always does what I believe is the harder things. When I'm just like more so like, let's do the cosmetic rehab. She's just like, I'm going for it. I'm buying land and I'm building seven, you know, single family homes. <laughs> so, and her process has been super crazy with permitting. She's had the, the land for well over a year now, and she still hasn't gotten the permits. Did you, <clears throat> did you encounter anything like that? Where is that? Where's the property? It's, um, well, it's in the, it's a suburb of Atlanta. So now, well, she, if she's still on here, she can kind of probably just type it in. But I think that it's the city of South Fulton, super close to uh, Atlanta International Airport. So it's okay. not Chicago. Not Chicago. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, Chicago is kind of funny because there, there's a lot of, like, red tape around a lot of things in this city, but new construction permitting is not really one of them. Um, a new construction permit, if you work with an architect who's self-certified and you pay for the expedited zoning fee, you can have a permit in uh, one to two weeks. Um, now, of course, the planning phase, takes time, you know, when you're working with the architect on your new construction plans, that could take a few months going back and forth with different iterations and um, getting everything just right before you submit it to the city for the permit. But assuming that you, you, you use the self-certified program with that architect and you pay for the expedited zoning, which is where a lot of the plans 
uh, get held up is in zoning review. Um, yeah, we've, we've, we've had permits anywhere from four days to two weeks for new construction, whereas we've waited six to eight weeks before for, um, for a gut renovation permit. Yeah. Well, Jenny, did you say four days? Four days. And that was so that was a very special circumstance. Uh, we have a property right now in Lakeview on North Sheffield Avenue, and uh, who still needs a name, by the way. <laughs> so if anybody, if anybody <laughs> um, so our property in Lakeview, it was a house, and we tore it down, and we're building three luxury condos. So we're in the middle of, of bricking up the structure right now. Um, but we had to go through a zoning variance and a special use permit, which took about five months. Now, we knew this going in, that it was going to be four to six months to go for the variance and special use permit. Um, but because we went through the zoning board stuff sort of alongside finalizing the construction plans, we our architect and us, we, we both were fairly confident that once the zoning board approved our variance and our special use permit, that they would approve it, we could right away then just submit the plans to the city for the permit. Um, now, had the Zoning Board of Appeals come back and said, you know what, this isn't going to pass, you need to change this, change that, change this, then we would have had to go back to the drawing board and make those corrections to the plans, but that's not what happened. They, they, were, they were just practically, you know, ready to go. And, and in all fairness, I mean, we worked with an architect who built the building next door to, to, what, to what we're building, and he basically created the same plans, similar plans, you know, similar layout, and so... 99.9% we knew that this was going to pass through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the second that it passed, it was like the next day that the architect submitted those plans to the city with the zoning approval, and it was, it was four days later that we got the permit approved. Wow. Amazing. I love it's that not story. the norm. Four <laughs> days is not the norm. But I would, say, I would say one and a half to two weeks is the norm for new construction if you do it right. Ooh, I think my, my sister wished that it happened to her, <laughs> but you know she's still she's still fighting through. So and we're hopeful that it's definitely going to go through. So it looks like Greg just quit on you. He was saying that since new construction is easy, you can handle it, and you go somewhere warm for the winter. So if you need quality builders, we're here for you, Jenny. <laughs> actually with quality builders we you know it would be nice to do some sort of a partnership on some new construction projects if we could find the right deal for sure we're still waiting on that day we're like property people we're gonna work with them so we're still putting it out there we'll, right. we'll name we'll name the joint venture quality people <laughs> oh my god jonathan oh, is of our two companies <laughs> you hear that <laughs> tom is on this call. tom jonathan you heard it we're gonna discuss it <laughs> <laughs> so now to shift gears a little bit um because this is about women in real estate and construction really like you do you're a developer construction i'm in construction um gc quality builders so let's talk about being a woman in real estate and in construction i remember walking into my first uh meetup and seeing a sea of men i was literally the only woman in the room, um, and I was younger too, so quite young, walking in, and I was just like, <gasps> it was a little nerve-wracking. So what is your experience being in being a woman in real estate? Is it Has it been extra challenging, or are there any benefits? I think um, the short answer is, for me, no. I haven't found it challenging being a woman in this industry, um, but I also so do not deal with contractors on site. And so oh. I will say that that mm -hmm. is probably the most challenging part of this industry is 
is dealing with contractors, um, even just being a man. You know, and I hate to make this into a gender thing, but it's 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 just hard to deal with contractors. I mean, think on top of that, there's this stigma or this stereotype of, you know, a lot of contractors don't necessarily have the same amount of respect for women as they do for men. Right. And it's probably just because this has been a male-dominated industry for so long, and, and that's usually who the boss is, right? It's a guy. Um, so, you know, I think we're trying to blaze new trails, kind of. Um, but as far as my experience, no. Real estate meetups, I, I yes, it's definitely more male. Um, but I do see quite a, quite a bit of women um, at these meetups now, and especially we have a ladies' meetup that's all women uh, aspiring investors or newbie investors or pro investors, all different you know calibers of investor, uh, women only, um, which is a nice a nice group for for that type of camaraderie. Um, and to sort of just give us a little bit more confidence, you know, that we're not alone. Um, yeah, I don't know. Has your has your experience changed over the years too? Have you noticed the difference in that? It's definitely um, changed over the years. Um, I do. I have had experiences where I'm talking to like a GC or to somebody, and they're just kind of looking like, "Okay, when is your husband coming?" And I'm just like, "Uh, no, it's you're dealing with me. I, <laughs> you know." <laughs> I'm the one there. He, he's very, very supportive, um, but I do a lot of like the talking with the with the GCs and with the subcontractor. But it's definitely changing. And I love that you mentioned women only meetups. Uh, I think we're both a part of like Invest Her. It's called the Real Estate Invest Her, where just women. Uh, is it Andre Andresa Andresa? I never know how to pronounce her name. Andresa and Liz. Yeah. Uh, form this group for every woman here. If you're not in an invest her meetup, you have to. It's just so supportive, so supportive. And it's just great, like walking into a room full of women and everyone is just kind of just transparent, vulnerable, just supporting each other. Um, and I, I've heard more stories of, through, the, through those meetups about like not being treated fairly or equally. And people, you know, get, up, get, get in the room, we vent a little, um, but then, you know, just get right back to it of just being super supportive giving out resources. And I think that is the biggest thing is just adding value to other people, whether male or female, um, obviously. But um, yeah. it's definitely changed since I've started to, to now. And it just depends on which area too, because like my first meetup was in Texas. Uh, was it a <laughs> Midland, Odessa, West Texas? So it was, it was a little different. There definitely were not a lot of women real estate investors over there versus like maybe Atlanta or Chicago or elsewhere. But, um, but we're, we're in real estate. We're here to stay. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, and we are obviously here just to talk about real estate investment and construction, but you're also big on mindset, which is the reason why like, you know, property people, quality builders get along so well is that, you guys are also so focused on mindset. And we won't dive into that too much uh, right now, but uh, can you just kind of talk a little bit about the kind of mindset things that you do? On one of your IG stories, you wrote, and I quote, when you do what you love each day, it's easy to forget what time it is. And there's so many people in life that truly don't enjoy what they do, which you know leads to like just general on happiness and not feeling fulfilled in life. Is real estate giving you that fulfillment? Is this the most fulfilled you've been since sorry? Ever. Ever. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is definitely the rest of my life type wow. thing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And there's there's so many there's so many, you know, different facets of this industry. You know, so like if you get burned out in one part of it or you get bored in one part of it or you feel just too stumped and you want to explore another area of it, you can. And I think that's the beauty of, of real estate is there's so many different entry points and there's so many different ways to participate in it. And you can do it forever, you know. Yeah. You, there's no age. And you can start when you're really young, too which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I love this. I love, I'd like to really learn more about design because I, <laughs> excuse me, I sort of, you know, 
flung myself into the design part of this without any real foundation, you know, no foundational knowledge or studying or experience. I, I've always been a creative person, um, you know, theater, music, dance, arts, always. It's my passion. I have a, like a, just a, a love for it. Um, but as far as design, you know, interior design or designing homes, that's something that I would like to study um, to really, um, I don't know, devote myself more to learning the fundamentals and the foundations of that so that I can be even better um, and not just be making stuff up, you know, or copying other designers' stuff because it's cool. <laughs> I want to have a reason. I want to have a reason for putting this there and putting that there and not putting this here, you know, instead of just, well, that seems right, you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah, no, I, you were talking about mindset, and it's, I would say the majority of the time I'm in a good place mentally and emotionally. Um, there's always days where, you know, they're harder than others. Just And it's not that anything external is really hard. It's just sometimes you just get caught in your own mind. You, you have a thought come through, and then it starts to permeate, and mm. it just keeps going and going, and then you give it energy, and, and then you start thinking, what am I doing? And, like, I don't even belong in this industry, you know? Sometimes I do feel that way. I'm like, who am I? I'm a fraud. No, seriously. Because, because I came from a totally different industry. I didn't have any experience or knowledge. I'm like, how did this happen? Who am I? It's mm. even real. You know, so I do have those thoughts. Um, and I think that's important to share because yes. it's not all just, you know, candies and roses and peaches and perfect. And, you know, there are those days and those moments where that happens. But I think the important thing is to, if you can, not let it fester too long. Um, and I think the only way really to get out of that is to, is to surround yourself with people, you know, okay community. Um, so make a phone call, right? Call a friend, call a family member, or, um, you know, go to a go to a networking event or do something where you're surrounded by people to get you out of that mindset um, or to shift that mindset into something positive. Wow. Like, you just touched on so many things. I don't even know where to start, but the imposter syndrome. Um, yes, for sure. And um, since we're even talking about, like, being women in real estate, I know that women tend to feel more imposter syndrome um sometimes so i think it's really amazing to hear you talk about that because like we you all have it we're just like wait how did i get here how am i i've always wanted to i just knew that real estate was my thing i just i i even just growing up i'm like huh i'm probably gonna i would love to get into construction and like and it's all happening i'm like wait how did i get here like for like for jonathan or tom two of my co-founders like they're engineers, it kind of makes it makes sense that they're that they're here and that they're doing this. But for me, my background is like is in public administration, nonprofit management, and I'm just like, how did I get here? And how did I get to live this like life that I love, doing exactly what I love? So I definitely understand what you were saying about that, and you're just like, Ugh, what is going on? But I love what you said about you know talking to people. Um, for us, uh, we do a one on one every week. Uh, as much as I'm just like, ah, another one-on-one, -on -one. Jonathan is going to pick my brain and say all this. But it's wonderful to be able to just talk it out, be completely vulnerable about how you're feeling. And that's like one of our biggest thing um, is just 100% visibility. One of our core values, transparency, it's super, super helpful and being able to talk to others and be able to get out of that stage that you're in and know that you do belong there. Like you put in the work, Jenny. I put in the work. We definitely belong here. Um, and I love, love that you guys have one on ones oh. where where you where you talk about like feelings or you talk about business or both feelings. We don't talk about business uh, unless business is what's affected our feelings. <laughs> no, the one on one is definitely all about like personal growth, personal development, and how to deal with um, whatever it is that's going on. If you're in a mind frame, like even in a meeting when we when we get into a certain mind frame, if one person, we're discussing like, a, we call it rumble, we're having a rumble, 
and we're discussing something that may not be the most pleasant and someone starts to kind of their energy starts to dip and it's just like all right wait stop let's get this person's energy back up um so it's i love that rumble that's Renee brown right yeah it's really amazing all right thank you that was that was so good i'm gonna go back and watch this and take notes so i hope that everyone here is taking notes because this is just really really wonderful wonderful things so interesting you talked about not really having a formal background in design because i literally have here in my notes queen of selecting gorgeous finishes so <laughs> what can you how do you can you walk us through your process of selecting finishes your finishes are gorgeous jenny and i don't I'm a little surprised that you're saying like you're kind of just piecing it together. So how Thank do you do the of it? Like if you guys are here and you don't follow property people, please go follow them and look at her gorgeous designs. Look at her fixtures. It's just amazing. I'm always like, wait, that is interesting. I would have never been able to put that together. So I think you do such a wonderful job. What? So tell us about that. Like what is your process for doing so? Like how do you source your finishes, your fixtures? Can you give us a little some tips on that? Yeah, th thank you so much first. I really appreciate those kind words. <laughs> um, that means a lot. Um, I, I do, so for each project, I decide what the theme of the house or the project is going to be, you know, just, just like what, what style is it going to be. Um, and usually that's because I'm following some designers on Instagram and I'm seeing a lot of something and I'm thinking, oh, that would be great for Roxy, or oh, that would be great for Sheffield, or oh, that would be, and then I and then I just go from there, right? So it, it's definitely inspired by Pinterest and Instagram designers and you know reels and stuff like that, where, that, where I'm seeing great ideas, um, and then I build from there. So once I decide on the style, I'll I'll just start building my. I have a I use Canva for like mood boards and making presentations and putting the rooms together. Um, and then um, we, we have some vendors that we source materials from, like our regular go-tos. Uh, Studio 41 is a pretty well-known one here in Chicago for plumbing fixtures. And then for tile, we work with either floor and decor or tile rooms. Sometimes we get tile from Wayfair, just depending on what tile it is. Um, but I try, we, we try to source everything as much as we can from like one vendor for, for that category. So, if it's plumbing fixtures, it's just easier to not order from five different vendors and have to track all those different deliveries. It's easier to just go to the one vendor, Studio 41, for example, and get as much as we can from them. Um, and there, and you know, these these suppliers and vendors, they're really good at guiding you also. So when I bring in the plans and I bring in my ideas from my mood boards and my thoughts, you know, they'll kind of steer you towards, well, this is modern, this is transitional, this is traditional, this is this, is this, this is that, this is more European, this is more this. And so they, they also are really good um, if you've never gone to any of these showrooms. Um, I don't know if Floor and Decor has that um, ability, but, but these, these mom-pop places like Studio 41 and Tile Room, they're, they're pretty good at kind of guiding you on you know, how to stay with the theme of, of whatever design you're doing for that property. Um, but yeah, and, but a lot of it really is just inspiration from from designers that I follow, um, and I and I follow I follow some designers who are in Chicago, and, and part of the reason for that is well, I mean their stuff is beautiful and they're local, but I but I also know that you know they're designing homes for people in Chicago, and mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what people, oh smart that's, what, that's smart yeah that's what people who have high end taste are looking for in Chicago, and so that would be my market. And then my goal is to find those products at a reduced price. <laughs> so not to pay like the full retail price of, you know, the kitchen cabinets or the electrical fixtures, but to find something that looks like them is still good quality, but not the best quality, not the best best, um, and, uh, and make it work for, for the budget and for the project. Jesus. Thank you for that. Thank you for that tip. So go to your local mom and pop shop and also local designers and local stores. Thank you. Um, so we're nearing time. So I just have like a few more questions. What has been your biggest win? So Roxy, so Roxy. My biggest win? So far in the, your real estate journey. What has been uh, so proud of? You're just like, this is just wonderful. 
Oh my gosh. Oh. That's a good question. We, we used to do we, we used to do these weekly meetings where we would start off with wins oh. and we would always have a win every week. Um, mm-hmm. so there's like hundreds of wins because we we believe in celebrating all wins. You know, even even the small, the seemingly small ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say, oh my gosh, can we come back to that question? I, it's really hard to know. It's really, really hard. It's really hard. I, you know what? I know what my biggest win is. It's honestly, and, and I'm not just saying this. It's it's having Greg mm-hmm. on my team because the the truth. The truth, truth, is that if it weren't for him, I never would have done this business. Hmm. Greg, are you still here? <laughs> if he is, he's not going to say anything because he's probably embarrassed. <laughs> if he is still here. <laughs> for everybody else here, Greg is her partner in life and in business. So that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm so glad that you found someone that that you guys are able to do this together. I think it's really special to have that, for sure. All right, thank you for that. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. So I'm um, kind of like my- <laughs> a good question, it's a really good question. <laughs> so just my last uh, question is like, what tips, what advice would you have for women that are looking to get started in real estate investing? Uh, and even development too, because that's, to me, it's a whole nother beast. And I'm just like super proud of you. So we're proud of you and Greg and property people. So what advice would you have for someone that is not maybe quite there yet, um, but has always wanted to do it, but hasn't really jumped just yet? What would you say? Because you jumped and you jumped, just dive right in. So what advice would you have for that woman? Yeah, yeah it's a good question. I would, um, I would say start where you are with what you have number one, um, and, and number two, but also kind of paralleling number one is go to local real estate investor meetups. Networking, going to the meetups, it's a must. It's definitely in my top three or top five, you know, things that I, I would recommend to anyone that's looking to get into real estate investing. Go meet other people in your local area who are doing what it is you want to do. It's, there's nothing, reading books is great, listening to podcasts is great, watching YouTube videos is great, following influencers on Instagram is great for all the information, but there's nothing like going to a live local event, meeting people in your area that are doing what you're looking to do. That is so good. That is so good. Even if you don't enjoy networking, it's all, a, what I've been learning, it's all a mindset. It's all a mindset because I came here at, on this live, like, oh my God, this is not me. It's not what I do. I'm just like, it's just a mindset. It's a very self limiting mindset. Go out there. Real estate investors are really, for the most part, very, very nice people. And people just love talking about what they're doing at these meetups. So, what I've always find is like, introduce yourself. People would just start talking. Um, and, ask, and you get to ask questions. Yeah. And ask questions, right? Because people love, like you said, they love to talk about themselves. Mm-hmm. This is true. Um, and so ask questions. Um, and I think also remember that, you know, I, I, I also, I hated networking. I hated the idea of networking. You know, some of these events, it's, it's helpful sometimes to maybe not think of them as networking events, but rather just like a gathering event, right, where people who share a similar goal to you are congregating, let's say. It's a community, right? And the goal really of everybody there, I think ultimately, and I, I said this on, on the hot holiday party, so I it might sound redundant, but this was on Jonathan Clem's uh, little video, but I think every, everybody really is looking to belong, right? We all mm. just want to belong. We want to be accepted and belong. And so, you know, yes. if, if you remember that, as you walk into one of these gatherings, as a new person, not knowing anyone, you know, there are people there also that are just looking to That's belong and to be accepted by others. That is so good. And they're so valuable. My second um, property, I got it because I went to meetups. The One of the lady that lived across the street from the property, I met her at the meetup. And as soon as that property went on the market, she texted me and said, hey, the property, the duplex across the street from me is on the market. I know you've been looking. So, like, we got in there, like, same day, 
put a contract on it and and got it and we had like some other people that also put in a contract but the the agent told us it's just because like we moved so fast and that wouldn't have happened if i didn't meet that lady at the meetup if i didn't speak to her actually exchange numbers so i completely completely agree with you and just belonging is just so great and the more you go to meetups you start to kind of see familiar faces also so i love that go to meetups and i also love to start where you are with what you have i i love that don't wait this is it we're still in january right yeah this is the year just dive right in dive right in jenny once again a pleasure a pleasure to my pleasure thank you so much for putting this together and organizing and inviting me i hope we'll have many many more because i really would love to pick your brain on mindset i love i love your mindset and i want our audience to to kind of listen to that oh and by the way um jonathan said property builders <laughs> <laughs> another another good option <laughs> but jenny so much and everyone one that's here thank you um obviously it's in the evening so you could be anywhere but you came so and that really means a lot to us so thank you so much please follow property people if you're not following quality builders do that also but follow property people they have a whole highlight on roxy so go <laughs> check it out it's <laughs> completely beautiful when i'm in chicago the next time i would love to, well hopefully it's completely all gone by then <laughs> um but um, congratulations on finishing that up, and um, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, that, that also showed up and gave their time and presence here, and thank you for putting this together, Malali. It's really good to connect with you. Oh, it's always good to connect with you. You too. And if Greg does go away for the third, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will. <laughs> All right. Thank you.